We are so blessed to have Sherry. <laughs> I just, that's a gorgeous piece. Well, so, maybe we should have the team stand up. We are missing two people. Just stand. You don't have to come up. Just stand up. Um, Pastor Chris and Kim Myros with Justice, uh, Donna Kurtz, um, Melissa Brunati, and Roy and I went to the Dominican Republic uh, three weeks ago. We were on a plane. You guys were <laughs> suffering <laughs> with a lot of hassle. <laughs> and we, uh, I kind of had to laugh, actually, because <laughs> it just seemed like there we were going where it was going to be really warm and we had left all this cold. And I was really thankful for that. I thought that was really great. Um, so all of us are going to, to speak a little bit. We've, we're all supposed to stay at five minutes. We'll see if that works out. Um, and I think each of us is going to take a turn um, speaking, and we'll just kind of go right down the line, and Pastor Chris will close for us. And he'll, um, at that time, have a few slides that he'll point out as he talks about the ministry. So, Justice, did you want to start, please? All right, so I'm going to help Justice a little bit, and he's going to tell us a little bit about his experiences. And uh, Justice, just of all the things that we did in the DR, what is the most memorable for you? Going on the plane. Yeah. <laughs> Justice enjoys going on planes, and he hasn't been on one since he was pretty young, so that was a, a fun experience. When we were in the DR, what, what, what did you notice was different in the DR than maybe here in Minnesota? That they speak Spanish and there's um, different kind of buildings. Yeah. And when we left the airport, what was the thing that you first noticed as we were driving? Here? No, no in the DR. Um, that they drive crazier. That they drive much different than we do in Minnesota. Now, Justice's responsibilities when we were there, he worked a, a little bit different schedule than we did because the missionaries, if you've been here when they've been here before, that work full-time for time ministry are Paul and Cindy Anderson, and they have two younger children, and, and Justice has connected well with them over the years. So why don't you just tell us a little bit what you did throughout the week for the most part with those two. I played with Paul and Sophia and... We watched a few movies, and um, we played outside some, and we played, um, we built the water slide on their roof. Yes. So one of, the, one of the neat things Justice was able to do, and you don't think of this in a classic sense of ministry, but uh, their two kids are in this compound full-time with ministries coming and going, and almost never ever, other than the children of the other people who work there, uh, are they with kids coming from the U.S. So it was a really neat opportunity to have someone come down from the U.S. to be able to spend some time with them and connect and play and have fun. And uh, they got to serve a little bit, helping clean up here and there and some other odds and ends. And so they did a great job. Justice, as you can see, rubbing his neck. His neck is hurting him quite a bit this morning. So you can keep him in prayer because for the last 48 hours he's been in pain. So his neck is not cooperating. Is there anything else you want to say this morning, Justice? No? Well, we were very glad that he was with us, and he did a great job. And so with that, Roy, do you want to go next? Okay, uh, we had an enjoyable time there. Do I have to talk? <laughs> okay, we landed in the DR and got on the bus. It was a long ride, but uh, their daughter, Sophia, uh, kind of took over my lap. So I had someone sleeping in my lap all the way back. And... Uh, we got back to the compound and we had a nice spaghetti dinner. Um, okay, we started out our day by getting up and having breakfast. Then we went up to the rooftop and we had devotions with the whole group and uh, Pastor knew. 
Uh, Nuet? Noet? No way. Um, anyway, he would um, give us a, he would lead the devotions and we'd sing songs and we were up there for about a half hour every day. And um, then we went down and we got started working on benches. So I was on the saw most of the day and we got all the pieces cut up so the next day we could um, start assembling them and then on Thursday we got to deliver them to the church. Wednesday was New Year's and New Year's they wanted to give some of their kitchen staff time off so I ended up in the kitchen. Um, and I enjoyed it immensely. Um, then um, and if anyone was here on Wednesday night, that's basically our noon meal on Wednesday that we had there. Um, when we went and brought the benches to the church, um, the, one of the neighbor, a couple of the neighbor ladies came in and they were singing and praising God and the pastor come in and he went in back and got some oil and he come and had us all put oil on our hands and pray over the benches that we put in the church. And basically, he wanted us to pray that they would be a blessing to his church and people would grow up in his church to become pastors and servants of the Lord. So that was kind of a special day. And then that afternoon... Uh, we went and had a time with the orphanage and with, when we were at the orphanage that day we had a party for them and played games and uh, the day before they were there and they showed pictures and talked about Minnesota I guess but some of them went around with me with a red suit on so they were all expecting me to wear a red suit the next day I didn't. Um, we were had very good meals when we were there. Um, the noon meal was always a Dominican dish. Uh, they had something fried, something, some meat, a vegetable, and a salad, and fruit, and rice at every meal. Well, I, I'm at their dinner meal. So they did feed us good. Nobody ever went away hungry. And you had to stop them from putting food on your plate. Otherwise, you'd never get to eat it all. And um, that's kind of what I got wrote down here. We did the last day. We did go into a shop in town and look around. And uh, then after that, part of us went to a chocolate factory and we went around and made a chocolate candy bar. And uh, that was kind of fun and interesting. We got to see all the machinery they used and work in a glass cage. And uh, we, did, we did go to the beach one day, and um, I didn't go swimming, but I went, when we went there, it was kind of nice, and the ones of us that didn't go swimming, we had a nice chat anyway. So that's about what I have to say. You want to come on up? Okay, so first of all, I want to thank everybody for the support, and I heard there was lots of prayers. And um, this was my first time going out of the country, so it was a little nerve-wracking, and it was also something new that I learned, because I had to get my passport and all this stuff beforehand. And 
But the flight and everything, the airport went amazingly and smooth with all of us as a group. That I just can't believe it because there were so many people there and things went really well. Um, then when we got there, the, um, the heat was nice. <laughs> it was a little humid. And the first thing that I noticed when we got to the airport was that there was a lot of people there, like, welcoming you. There were so many people out after you got out of the security part. And there was a lot of people there to just say hello and welcome. We're glad you're here. And after that, it was just people everywhere. Everybody's outside consistently. There's a lot of noise, music being played all hours of the night. <laughs> And dogs barking, we all got a kick out of that because the dogs were like hooting and hollering. There was even a car accident because they drive pretty crazy there. Um, I think I really want to talk about my experience. Um, I'm a little nervous up here because I don't do well at speaking, so I might sound shaky. But <laughs> um, it was really great to be a part of everybody that came with from the church. It was the fellowship with everybody was so great. It was like we bonded so well, and there were so many challenges. And we got through it, and it was just really a great experience. I hope that more of us in this church could do that more often and get together more, just building the project and you know, doing the benches. I worked with Paul, and we, oh gosh, I think we cut, I don't know, like 80, maybe more pieces of wood. So that was kind of my job at first. And then Somehow, Noe was like, you're going to sand, and he was the construction leader, and it just felt like that was kind of my part in that whole project, like the sanding was so hard, and things were going well until we had run out of a certain amount of sandpaper, and there was this part in my journey in that day where it was like, I'm never going to be able to get this done because I kind of felt like I was in charge of that station, and how am I going to get the pieces sanded? And I just prayed, and then this uh, Tyler guy came, and he showed me some tricks which allowed us to get on speed. And we ended up getting the benches done early, which allowed us to go to the church to deliver the benches, which was really amazing to see that in this little place, I'm not sure because um, dimension-wise, I want to say maybe 20 by 20, do you think that's how big it was, 10 by 20? It wasn't very big. But all these benches that we supplied, we found out that we could fit, fit probably, they would fit 80 people in that church. And it was such an amazing thing to see, and I'm glad we got to see that. It was, it was great to see how it was all going to go into play for everybody. And um, I'm trying to think of what else. The, just being taken care of at the compound was amazing. There, we had bunk beds, and so that was nice because my, my first thought when we were going there was that we were going to be sleeping on cots, and how comfortable would it be? And so it was surprising that it was quite comfortable there. We had bunk beds, and we slept in there. And little to our surprise, we had showers, and they, I was like, oh, yes, we get a shower, and it's cold water. <laughs> so you get in, and it's, it's kind of cold, but after your next shower, you appreciate it because you wake up rather sweaty and um, uncomfortable. So... Um, I was really blessed to be a part of the orphanage, and I wanted to thank Justice for his help because he really helped. I had to do, I don't speak very much Spanish, and so I worked with several people came to my station. We had the goggles station, and um, so it was, there was times where my translators weren't there, and it was a struggle, and Justice came in and helped and decided he was going to help me because it got kind of chaotic at times when we'd sw swing through groups. There was six different groups that came through. And I also found out that how God works in amazing ways because I had these little kids that were not interested in this game at all. Like, out of everybody, the little kids were least interested, I think. And they were all trying to speak to me, and my translators ran off, and they're running one way, and you know, several of them are running all over, and I'm supposed to keep them in my area. But somehow God was able to get me through that experience and speak through, and with these children... And this one little girl had to go to the bathroom, and I had no idea what she was saying. And I just prayed. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is so chaotic. I don't know what I'm going to do. And um, we figured out that she had to go to the bathroom, and I figured out a lot through these kids and just everybody there. And um, it just it truly was a great, it was a great, great experience for me. I learned that when things get hard, to never give up. And, you know, somebody... 
somebody always has something that they can give you that you think you cannot. You just need to speak up and ask for the help, and that was really the other big part that I had learned there, too. Um, we all can't do things alone. We need each other to do things together, and these people there are very appreciative of one another, and they're loving, and they're open, and they won't, like, I don't know. They're just great people at the compound. We had interns with us that were very helpful, and I sat with them a lot and learned a lot of their stories. And um, But I want to thank everybody for your support and prayers, and I think that's all I have. Um, I, when I look back on that experience, I think of people, not so much what I did, because I really didn't physically do a lot. I'm still not at a point where I can hold a hammer and, and, or a screwdriver or sandpaper. Um, but I did get to work with uh, one woman who is the head cook, and we set up her computer. Big surprise. <laughs> um, but she was so appreciative. I really have to have to say what Melissa was saying. Um, she just really loved that she was going getting the help to learn how to do this. And it was, you know, I do this every week at the library, and I get a lot of gratitude here. But there, it's just a step further into gratitude, and it was really incredible. She's also, by the way, an incredible cook. <laughs> she has um, menu choices that um, just were awesome. Um, and oddly enough, or at least in my head, oddly enough, none of, nothing was very hot, you know, in the, in the sense of spicy. Um, I was expecting it to be more like Mexican or Haitian, and it just wasn't. In fact, I was actually putting Tabasco on food to get it to have a little spice. Um, and so that was pretty interesting. Um, so she was the first person that I thought of when I was um, thinking through this. And then there was Pastor Noe and his wife. And now here's, this is, am I right? Agno, Agnoli? Agnoli? Is that right? Okay. And, and they are, um, they're pastor a church in uh, the city. Um, it's a small church. And then they have three children who minister with them as well. Their oldest is developing a gorgeous voice. And um, they attend, when they can, they attend the church that's connected with the compound um, that we were at. But what I thought about with with Noe was how he challenged us each day. And it was very direct and actually quite blunt. And yet that's exactly what we needed, to be thinking about why are we doing what we're doing? Why, where is God putting us today and how can we glorify him today? And it was, it was just every day was just a really, really beautiful challenge. It was also interesting to, to um, sing some of the songs because some of them had been, they're ones we know, kind of, um, but they've been translated from the Spanish into English and so some of the words were missing and things like that, but we, we soldiered through it and it was really a blessing to all of us and we hope to um, no way as well. Um, and I don't know why I have trouble with this with this, with this word, but An Anoli, his wife, is a um, encourager of women and very strong in women's ministry. And she um, was sharing with me some of the places she's gone. She's been in Mexico, Cuba, Puerto Rico, as well as the Dominican Republic, and I think Haiti as well. And so she she puts together pastors' wives conferences and women's conferences, and and she was just sharing with me about how blessed she was to be able to do that. And um, I'm going to tell a secret on Roy. He's been asked to go back in November and um, prepare the food for the conference that they're going to do at Time Ministry in November. So we're going to work toward him being able to do that. I think of Cindy and Chris Anderson as they um, as they are uh, working day after day after day after day and having their children and raising their family there. Um, they were both immensely um, helpful, um, available to ask questions and, and give answers, and um, that was truly amazing. The interns that we had were absolutely great. And then there was a missionary there whose name is Tyler uh, Prescott, and he he is about... 27, I think, and he's married to a Dominican Republican um, 
person, which when I finally saw how it was spelled, I realized it's the Spanish word for Sarah. So that, that helped me a lot <laughs> because he pronounces it kind of differently. And uh, he's from New Hampshire and has been there about a year and a half or two years. So we really got to know him, a well, him well. And I think um, just a feeling of this ministry is... <clears throat> Excuse me, more than just building a chapel or building um, benches. It's building the church so that people who are the church can meet and not have to contend with being outside in the rain or um, in a cramped building. I mean, they're still small by our standards, but there are 80 people in that one space is not very cramped, actually, by their standards. And yet, right now, some places don't have them at all. So they they are looking at the the building as being a service to the churches. And in, I was a little concerned, being part of the mission committee, that we were wanting to support them. But, you know, are they taking away from the local economy? That's a real issue in missions today. And um, no, they're not. They, they have the, the building, the shell, built by people like us or by other churches that come in, but the foundation and the <clears throat> interior all is done by the churches themselves. And so it's not something that is taking away from, um, from, their, from their economy, which I was very thankful for. So I guess... I don't want to talk too long here, so I'll, that was, but that was my thing, was just looking at the people around and seeing how, how beautifully they glorify God on a day-to-day -day basis and how, um, how differently we look at things compared to how they look at things. And also, I learned I know more Spanish than I thought I did. <laughs> but, okay, who's next? Well, thank you for your support and prayers for us. It really is a privilege to be able to um, to go. Um, so I do really say thank you. Now, I wasn't really sure what to expect. Um, I'm not very good at building stuff, and I kind of warned people that I wasn't any good at it, and I proved that when I was there at times. Um, so... I struggled a little bit because I was kind of discouraged, but I realized it's not about me. It's, it's about what God can do through the whole bunch of us, you know. So, it, you know, it didn't matter that much after all. So, um, yes, in the devotional time, one of the days uh, we were talking about justice and mercy, and I felt that God was really sharing with me something about justice and mercy. And that, and that was, you said to me, well, if someone was talking to you and they um, were giving symptoms and they were saying symptoms about stuff like, you know, I don't know, some disease and you go, you, you recognize that they may have some kind of a disease, you wouldn't go, you wouldn't say like, well, I'm not going to tell them because they're not going to like it, <laughs> you know, you're going to tell them and it's the same way with the gospel. To tell people is mercy, it's not justice, it's mercy. Because they need to know that that there is a problem, and sin is no to me is no different than a disease, you know. And there's so anyway. That's kind of what I was learning is that we need to we need to share. It's not it's being merciful to share. So, um, and one of the things that struck me too was how grateful people were. When we went and delivered those, those benches, um, the, the gratitude that they showed and the tears in their eyes as they received them and then how they were worshiping and praising God for, for just little benches. I mean, that, you know, nothing to me would be really special and, you know, kind of, you know, hard to sit in and <laughs> not very comfortable. And then I thought... It might be able to hold three or four Dominicans, but only two Americans, you know, because we're a lot heavier, heavier. But anyway, <laughs> so that and what really impacted me too was was going um, to Jackie's place because I I just those little kids were so special, you know, 
I was encouraged for one thing is that that how well behaved they were and um, even though they had hardly anything there you know they were like a family and they set it up like a family and they were like a family and they helped each other there and just you know we couldn't speak the language and that was probably one of the most frustrating things f for me was that I could not speak the language and tell them anything. But really, you know, when you smile, and you can play games in any language, and, and we had so much fun, and the kids had so much fun uh, we're playing together, and I think we really made their day, you know, and that they were wanted, and everybody was accepted, and everybody could play. And there was one girl in a, in a wheelchair you know, and the first day when we were going to different stations and talking about Minnesota, you know, I was wheeling her around to the different stations and stuff. And then the second day, she was, when she was at, she was even playing the games and stuff. And, and I mean, she even was, we were playing the game with the, the cups. And that, I was at that station where they have the cups and the ping pong balls. And she was even, she even got one in. I was just shocked, you know, that she got one in, but that we could all cheer for. Everybody got to be cheered for there. And I heard we were the loudest group around because we were, we had the, the two, the two groups, you know, competing against each other. And, and I was, um, my team was, com was um, against Tyler's team, and, and, you know, he's like an athlete and all this. And I was so tired because I was trying to get the ping pong balls back there as fast as I could, and I couldn't catch them, so I was running all over the place. And then finally Justice came and helped me because I was so thankful that he helped me because I was getting really tired. And I didn't want my team to lose because I was the weak link, you know. <laughs> so, so anyway, another thing that I really feel that I learned was that there's a, there is a power when when a group gets together of Christians it does say that where two or three are gathered in my name there I will be in the midst of them and I really believe there's such a power when you're all together and you're working on a common uh, goal uh, um, of a ministry that the, there is that power there that that fellowship that power that comes through from with God and and so I would say that's, I think, how it's going to be in heaven is going to be, we're going to be working together. We're going to be in groups. We're going to be eating together. We're going to be praising God together. We're going to be worshiping together um, and just singing songs of fellowship and, and things like that. So I guess that's kind of what I was, what some of the things I saw. So thanks. All right, do I get help like justice? <laughs> we'll see. You can intervene if, I'm not, if it's not going well. Um, just like everyone else, I just want to thank everybody for your financial and your prayer supports because this wouldn't have happened without you, and I think that's what really kept me going this, during the week, um, just knowing that we had a support team back here at home. And, um, you know, it's a sacrifice. It, I think that's one thing that really hit me. Um, on this trip was just the sacrifice that um, every, anybody does for short-term missions, but also the long-term missionaries, too, and just how important it is to support um, our missionaries overseas and even here. I mean, we're missionaries right here in Aiken, and there's a mission field right here in Aiken, and the, the need is great right here at home, too. And so that's what really impressed me. I, I, and then when I got there, I think my first impression was like, wow, I have not been out of the country since our honeymoon <laughs> our honeymoon and uh, that was about 14 years ago um, and that was at a nice resort I must say thanks to Chris's parents but um, and I hadn't done a mission trip since Malaysia which was back in 96 so I thought my gosh where is my life gone <laughs> what I've what have I been doing for 25 years where have I been um, anyways so that impressed me when I got there is just being in a third world country for the first time in a long time and just realizing the need, realizing how blessed we are here in America. Um, it's not easy. There was a lot of fear put in a lot of us, a lot of spiritual warfare before we left. And um, even with my ear, I thought I was going to have to go to the urgent care 
an hour before leaving on the plane. I still was like an hour before. I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can go. And I did. And, you know, thanks to the prayers, God, um, my ear was fine. So praise God for that. Um, and we got there and, you know, it's not easy. You are in a third world country. Um, there's no air conditioning when you sleep. We don't, we don't have all the nice luxuries. When you go to the bathroom, you can't throw the toilet paper in the toilet. You had to throw it in the waste basket. You had to take a cold shower. Um, the people, I didn't do a lot of the construction because I had open wound on my ear, but they worked hard out there. They're out there in the sun and the heat. Um, sawdust is flying everywhere. They're sweating. It's sticking to their bodies. It's in their eyes, their ears, their mouths, their nose. And so, um, you know, it's, you're reminded of that, just the sacrifice even of a short-term mission, that we're out of our luxuries, but, you know, it's worth it. So if you ever haven't gone, I'd like to go, it's, it's worth it, and God protects us. It, the trip went smoothly. Um, there's a few bumps on the road, but overall, we all had a, a great time. And, um, and, you know, it was neat to see how God used all of us, too, in our gifting areas. Um, I think we felt a little... We would have liked to be more prepared as we left, but it was cool how God brought up ministry opportunities that we didn't even plan for. Um, you know, for instance, as Don and I are not, we do not feel comfortable working with wood, right? And that's not our area. And I did go out um, towards the end when the, there wasn't so much sawdust. I went out and, and helped a little bit with the sanding and stuff. And that was tough. I mean, it's, it's, it was good to get out of my gifted areas and experience something different. But then it was neat that we went to the orphanage called Jackie's house and we got to work with the kids because that is my gifted area. And so that was really neat as well. Um, so on Monday and Tuesday when everybody's kind of working on the benches, I had the opportunity to basically kind of watch over um, Cindy's kids and Justice and again use my gifted areas with children. And what I realized is there's not, um, again going back to that sacrifice you know they they chose to leave the united states to go live in this foreign country and raise their kids there and it's kind of like a parsonage they I mean their kids grow up they have a little small apartment very small right on the uh, right on the grounds and so their kids don't have a lot of other kids to play with um there's not playgrounds you can just walk to that i know of um the playgrounds that were that we did experience were kind of like going back to 1960s in America where there were metal swings and metal teeter-totters and you knew it didn't meet the codes, um, safety codes we have here. And so as Paul was swinging, the swing came back and hit him in the head, the metal swing. And, um, you know, he's fine, but it just reminds you of the sacrifices that, that our missionaries make for um, the sake of the gospel. And so it was neat that I got to watch over the kids because I found out that week that um, that Cindy's nanny that she had hired um, left and went to another job. So she was kind of without a nanny. And the kids were home from school because it was a holiday. And she brought them to daycare on Monday. And I said, why are you doing that? You know, I can watch them. Um, I can't do construction because of my ear. And um, she brought them to, their, to daycare. And her daycare lady also does hair dress, dressing as well. And because of the holiday and the New Year's, she was booked with, with haircuts all day long. And so it was really hard for her to watch the kids. So again, it was just a blessing to be there on Tuesday. I spent time watching her kids so that Cindy could work. And I just remember the days when I had young kid, a young kid that any time anybody gave me an hour of time to myself to get stuff done, it was like a huge blessing. So it was just neat how God um, pulled us in in different areas unexpected. Again, Roy in the kitchen on Wednesday. It's just neat how we all just jumped in and were able to do um, use our giftings. Um, Ruth spent a lot of time helping with computers as well and her area of gifting. So it worked out and God used us. Um, I think the other thing I wanted to share was um, just the children's house. So when we went out there to Jackie's house, um, there was one girl in a wheelchair. And again, we didn't speak much Spanish, but it was neat. We sat down and she was into drawing stuff. So she drew these out and I just sat down and started coloring with her. And so what's neat is even if we don't have that, even if we have language barriers, we can still sit down and come alongside people and worship together and pray together, love each other. Um, there's a lot of body language we can use to communicate and things like that. So that was really neat. Her name was Claudia. Um, we, there's about 38 kids there. I don't know how many were there when we were there, but um, we learned that they 
um, that they do have parents, that their parents live in the in this dump, and they kind of survive off the trash and whatever they can find, um, recyclable things or whatever to build houses with. And one thing that struck me when we were there is, um, and I don't know if I should tell the story. Can I tell the story? Okay. No. Stop me if you don't. Um, one thing we learned is that the, the mothers who abort the kill, kids, they'll drink a poison. And so this one mom, she um, drank poison, and she drank it six times, and the baby was still born. And so there's one little boy who was back kind of in the where no one was. Um, he was kind of left in his crib. He was blind. I don't know all of his issues. He has a lot of sensory issues. But he was born, and so now he's got all these issues because of all that poison. And that just really struck me. And I laid hands on this boy and prayed for him, and he kept pushing my hands off. And I just really feel like God's saying to do something more with this child. I don't know what his needs are, but I'd like to find out more and see if there's a way um, to help him out more. I thought if he's in America, he'd be getting, you know, like early childhood development stuff, brain development. Um, we'd have the resources here, and I just I'm not familiar enough with what resources they have. Um, you know, I don't know if they have a if he needs a wheelchair. I don't know what it is, but. That really touched my heart, that little boy. So uh, as far as the games, it was fun. We went we went there Wednesday, and then we went back Wednesday. We just kind of told them about the four seasons we have in Minnesota, things they weren't familiar with. We had some fake snow there that they got to play with, and that was really fascinating to them to learn about snow in particular, but also just the, three, the four seasons that we have. Um, so we shared about Minnesota and where we're from. And that was neat to go back the next day, Thursday, because I think we all felt more comfortable with each other. We knew the kids. They kind of knew us. Um, and that's where we did the, the games and activities with them. We had six stations. And it was also neat. I mean, it, it took a team. We had a team of nine people. And it took all of us to do these six stations. And same with the benches. It, just, it was amazing how it just worked together um, for all of us as a team. And so the kids got to rotate between rock. They had, we had a rocket station. We had, like they said, the pong station with ping pong balls and cups. Um, we had goggles where you put them on, and it kind of changed your vision. And so the kids would throw a ball and not be able to get in the bucket because um, it throws off your vision. We had a bubble station. Uh, we had a craft station where we made crosses with them. And then finally we used the minute to win it thing from from you guys, from Glory Family Christmas, where you had the chopsticks and marshmallows and cups and, and raced with that as well. So uh, there was, we had a good time. Um, we threw an American meal for them with hot dogs and chips and um, ice cream and things like that. And, uh, and then what was the last thing we did? I'm trying to remember. Oh, we gave them gifts. So Donna came up with some really great stuffed animal dogs for like a dollar. Um, Melissa and her daughters made some homemade bracelets and put a lot of effort into that. And we also got composition books for the older kids. So it was just really fun to love on them and to um, just experience what life is like for them a little bit. All right, and with that, I'll pass it to Pastor Chris. Well, I'll share a few things and then we will get out of here. Today is obviously a little bit different than a normal day and a normal sermon, but uh do want to tie a few things in here. And it was a great experience. And again, as everybody said, we are deeply appreciative of your financial support, your prayer support, everything that enabled us um, to do this. And, and as you think about short-term missions trips, um, if you're not careful... Short-term mission trips can simply just be a, a glorified vacation. Um, they, they, they can be sightseeing tours filled with sporadic opportunities uh, that basically are arranged to give yourself a pat on the back. Um, and, and in those situations, that's, that's really not a helpful thing. It's not a useful thing. Uh, as, as Ruth was saying, one of the dangers in, in some short-term missions is um, is you actually do harm rather than help. And, and there's a number of books out there. Uh, a book called When Helping Hurts is, is a very fascinating read. It's a, uh, both applicable domestically as well as internationally. And it talks about how, for instance, an example I would give you domestically, locally, is um, when Kim and I lived in the Twin Cities, regularly panhandlers would ask you for stuff. And, and regularly I would tell them, no, 
and it's not because I don't love them, I understand the system. If I give cash or I give something they can use for cash, it, it furthers the addiction, it, it creates more problems than it solves. And so what I would frequently do is, uh, uh, an example again, is I had a guy outside of McDonald's one day asking me for money, and I said, I, I'm not going to give you money, but if you're hungry, I will buy you lunch. And he said, okay, that sounds good, I'm actually hungry. I said, well, what do you like? And he said, well, um, how about this? So I went in and I bought him two of them. So I went in and bought him two number fives is what he wanted. And, All right, go buy you two number fives. And I came back out when I was done and gave him two number fives. That way you got lunch, that way you got supper, and I know he was taken care of, and I can be a blessing to him rather than a curse to him. And, and in the same way, when you go out in the missions field, and short-term missions in particular, um, if you're not careful, the work that you do can, can actually create systems of dependency, systems where... Um, you go in and then it causes problems to the local economy and other things. And so it takes some intentionality, it takes some thought, it, it takes some processes to make sure that doesn't happen, which is why I was really glad we partnered with Time Ministries. And, and I've had Chris and Cindy here a number of times. We brought Chris and Cindy into the church I was at previously because I, I believe strongly in the systems that they use and the way they go about things. Why I like Time Ministries, and among the things that they do is they are empowering other local indigenous ministries. And that's really big for me. I think it's great that people from America want to go to other places or people from other places want to go to other places and be missionaries. I think that's awesome. But I also realize that the primary way that the gospel is spread it is spread from people who look like you and sound like you. It's your neighbors inviting other neighbors. And so um, if we're going to reach Aiken here, we, us, you and me, have to reach Aiken here. It's not going to be a missionary coming from South Africa. It's not going to be somebody coming from Korea. It's not going to be somebody coming from the Ukraine who's probably going to find success coming into Aiken County to reach the people of Aiken County. And the same is true in other places in the world, including the Dominican Republic. And so by equipping locals, and, and we do this in, in a number of ways. We do this in the DR. This is what uh, Coombe does in, in Kenya. We're equipping indigenous ministries to do the work there that they are better equipped to do than we ever can be as outsiders. Now, again, that doesn't mean we don't go and we don't do these things, but we, we have to do them with some intentionality. And so by doing this, uh, partnering with time, I think, we really were able to leverage our time, our gifting, our finances, our resources in a way that hopefully will have a long-term kingdom impact. And, and one of the great things about ministry, and I, I see this regularly as a pastor, what I do every day and what I do every week and even what I do every year, I don't always get to see the returns. It's kind of like farming in that sense. Um, you know, the, the, the farmer has to believe and have to trust that the work he's doing today, that somewhere down the road, there will be a yield. Now, in ministry in particular, it's a little bit different than farming because the farmer, he plants, he gets to reap, or she. Um, where in ministry, that's not always the case. And so I, I do believe that by going to the DR and, and planting some seeds there and the things that we did, that there will be a reaping. And one of the things as we were working on these benches, we were making simple pine wooden benches for people to sit on in a church. Uh, the church that got these pine benches about six months ago actually got their church from Time Ministries. Before that, uh, they were meeting either in people's homes or sitting out underneath trees out in the open with no place to worship. And so Time Ministries about six months ago came in and, and, and gifted them a church building, a completely completely free, so now they have a roof over their heads and walls and a door to lock so their stuff doesn't all get stolen. But inside of that space, they, they didn't have benches to sit on, right? So they had a, a worship space, but nothing else. And so we were able to come and, and build these benches. And as we were building these benches, one of the things I'd, I'd talked to our team about was uh, praying over those benches. Um, at, you know, the ladies talked about sanding benches. Well, sanding doesn't seem like a spiritual thing, but it is. Because if you're sanding and making that smooth so that some mom can sit there with her child and hear the gospel so that they're not getting splinters in their rear while the pastor's trying to preach, that matters, right? That makes a difference. We don't always think of it in those terms because when you're sitting there for, for the last two hours doing this till you almost have blisters on your hands, it doesn't feel really spiritual in the moment. But it matters. And there's so many correlations that 
when it speaks to ministry that we do here. I, I talk about this frequently. Uh, the investments we make, per, for instance, on Wednesday nights or, or bringing your kids to a Sunday school uh, on a Sunday morning or any of the many things that we do. Individually, you may not see the impact that it's making, but collectively, it begins to accumulate and it matters and it makes a difference. And so um, an incredibly important thing that we were doing there. I, I was so pleased to be able to partner with Time. Time does a fantastic job and would encourage everybody, uh, everybody to consider going if we go again or when we go again is probably the better term because I think we will be going there again. It was a fabulous experience. They do a wonderful job. One of the, the great things about Time is um, incredibly flexible in their ministry. So they were able to find ways to allow us to use our gifting and to put us in places to be successful in that and really did a fabulous job. Some, some short-term missions ministries are, are, are a hammer, and they hammer really well. And there's nothing wrong with that if you're a nail or a hammer. But if you're some other thing, you don't fit into that really well. And where, where Time Ministries is really, I think, almost unique is... They are flexible, and, and if you're a hammer, if you're a screwdriver, if you're a pair of pliers, or pliers, if you'll accept my analogy, um, they're able to find a way to use you and to put you into a place to be successful. So that that was really cool. Um, the things that I, other things that I just want to point out is, um, with time, it was so good because it was a safe, uh, clean place to be. Um, they, their facility is fabulous. They own about give or take about a third of a city block as part of their compound, which also includes a, a church next door that we got to worship at, at New Year's Eve. It was a pretty cool opportunity. Um, and, and so they have a really good setup and a really good place to be. Um, you know, uh, As far as security goes, there was no point in time we were worried. Um, they did a great job with all those sorts of things. As far as the team goes, it was really amazing. Uh, everybody pitched in. Everybody worked hard. Um, Nobody made it about themselves. There was a constant servant attitude, and, and that is um, really important, I think, to the things that we did. Um, as, I, as I thought through the things that I wanted to share about, um, while we were there, we worshipped. I think so many of the things we did were worship, and I think that's important. We certainly worked. We worked hard. Um, I don't know. If uh, Kim was really selling you when she was telling you how we were all hot and sweaty and covered in sawdust and we got to sleep with no air conditioning, if that inquired you to want to, want, or inclined you to want to come again, but uh, but in the midst of being covered in sawdust and the you know the heat and the humidity, it was wonderful because we knew we were serving a larger purpose, um, and it was great because we were able to connect. And Mike, if you want to cycle through some of those photos, you can go ahead and do that while I'm finishing up here. We were able to connect with various people, and this is at uh, uh, the, the, the children's home slash orphanage that we were at, and we'll, we'll have a whole meal coming up in a couple of weeks where you'll get to see lots of details and photos, and you can just roll through them, Micah, um, where you'll get to see a lot more things, and you'll see us worshiping here, and, and you'll get to see those and hear some of the stories that we can't really go into this morning because of time, but would encourage you to come and uh, sit down with us as we share a meal in a couple of weeks and be part of uh, of that experience as well. Um, some of the great things we got to do, and these are the benches piled on top of the van. That van drove out and uh, were brought in. And you'll see in, I think, maybe the next picture of, of the church. It's, nope, that's actually on Melissa and um, Elanji. Um, one of the things that Melissa was really great at was connecting with her staff and really sat down and, and spent time with the girls there particularly. And this is the church, and you can see the lady worshiping in the background, and they're praying over these benches, praying that... God would bring the right people into this small local church to sit on those benches and that lives and eternities would be transformed simply because we screwed a bunch of stuff together, we did a bunch of cutting, we did a bunch of sanding, and we brought it out to them. But God can use that. And so um, they also had some fun. We had some mochas. We had some uh, coffee drinks and that kind of fun stuff too. But uh, the, the last thing I just want to point out is we learned. Um, one of the great experiences is learning. Um, when you go to a different culture, when you go to a different place, when you get outside of the context of your everyday, uh, it challenges you, it pushes you, it helps you to grow a little bit. And so uh, if you've not had an experience of this sort, I would, would encourage you to do it, to, to go to take that risk. Um, 
You might not know where the finances are coming from. Well, believe me, none of us really did. Um, but God will provide. And so, coming up in the years to come, we're going to have some more opportunities to go. And I'm going to challenge you, all of you, to go. We took nine this time. Uh, I would love to take every single one of you and just literally have an empty church next time we go. We'll, we'll, we'll do church in the DR. And it'll be awesome. And we'll, we'll, we'll just put a sign on the door and say, sorry, we're gone for the week. And, and that would be great. Um, and, and I really think God can use each and every one of you. We had every age, every experience, and, and every range on this trip, and God was able to make a really good thing out of it. And so um, with that, uh, I just want to thank you once again. I want to pray, and then we are going to get out of here. Uh, as I said, I know it's a little bit different than a normal week and a normal sermon, but I truly think God showed up in the work that we were doing. And I think uh, this is one of the things that I mentioned while we were in the DR, is the idea of leaving a legacy. When, when you do something, you want to leave something behind. You want to leave something that's going to be greater. You want to leave something that's going to be enduring. And, and the work we do here at Glory and the work that we were doing in the DR, I believe, has the potential for that. And so my challenge to you this week is, uh, as you go forth this week, think about your legacy. Think about what it is you do, where you choose to invest, who it is you choose to be part of and part of with and, and spend time with investing in, um, what sort of legacy is that going to leave? And, and so with that, I will close in prayer and then we'll get out of here. Let's pray.